さあこの間も2ヶ月間ぐらい前からこの詩編のシリーズを始めましたけれども今日はもうメシアニック詩について話したいと思いますそしてこれは数週間を経ってあいわゆるメシアニック詩について話し続けたいと思いますさあ、so, a couple months ago we started our series in Psalms and we're up to Psalm series number three today But、uh, starting today, I want to talk a little bit about Messianic Psalms. And we're going to do this for several weeks、uh, because there's a lot of them, and we're going to try to touch on several of them、uh, as we go. So, what is a Messianic Psalm? Well, Messianic Psalms are Psalms that refer to Jesus, to the Savior, to the Messiah,、uh, written long before he came. And there, we know that a Psalm is Messianic if it's quoted in the New Testament, pointing to Jesus. If we see that the apostles and the writers of the New Testament agreed that it was messianic, then we agree with them, of course. And also, some other Psalms have content that clearly is speaking about the Messiah to come,、uh, but maybe isn't directly、uh, pointed out in the New Testament or is, there's no clear quotation, but it's still part of that background. Messianic, she, to you know, wa, mo, do you mono desu ka, do wakarimasu ka? Well, mazu, shin yak sei sho de,それまあそれもみんなは賛成しているわけじゃないですね。あもう23、24はメシアニックですかどうか、もうために人々は議論される。そして72も、これはメシアニックじゃないという声があります。その最後の方は89、91はほとんどの学者はそれはメシアニックだと認めるでしょう。いや私たちはそれをメシアニックですかどうか、もうそれをあまり気にしないで、それを学ぶときに、大きな利益が、大きな祝福があると思います。And of course, some of the Psalms that are considered messianic by content, there's not agreement, especially maybe 23 and 24, and sometimes 72. People don't always agree whether it's intended to be a messianic Psalm or not. 89 and 91, I think there's more agreement about that those are messianic. But when we study them, we don't really have to worry about that too much because we can find the blessing in studying them regardless of whether it really falls into a particular category or not. It's all part of our book of Psalms. So, one thing about Messianic Psalms is unlike the prophetic writings of, for example, Isaiah or Jeremiah,、uh, they were originally written for some purpose、uh, in that time, usually for some sort of historic occasion. But then the Holy Spirit led the authors to include prophetic content in them that was later recognized. このメシアニック詩編というのは、もう預言書のこと、例えばイジア書、エルミア書とかとちょっと違いますね。その預言書はもうあ見ると明確に預言のために書かれたものが多いですね。初めからこれは預言だった。でもメシアニック詩編では、もう大体、もともと歴史的な機会に使うために書かれていました。そして、聖霊はその指示に予言的に、予言的な真実を含めるように導いてくれましたから、それは後で人々はわかるようになりました。これは予言的なもの、メシアネだというのです。さあ、今日は、最初は、詩編、二編。So today we'll look at Psalm 2 as our introduction to the Messianic Psalms. This is the Messianic Psalm. 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 This is the
をに囲わる詩編ですね。そして、これは詩編4章の方で、ダビデが作者と、作者であると示していますね。その詩編のところに、作者の名前はついていないですでも、詩と4章ではダビデだったとあります。おそらくもっともっとこれはイスラエルの王たちの即位式のために書かれたことですね。So, Psalm 2 was, you know, it's a royal psalm, meaning it has something to do with the kings, you know, and things is related to that. And then in Acts 4, we see that David is cited as the author in Acts chapter 4, although there's no name on the psalm of what the author was. And probably it was originally written for the enthronement ceremony for Israel's kings, the kings following King David. So we put that together. We say, well, if it, maybe it's written by David and it's written for the enthronement or coronation ceremonies.、Uh, maybe it was first used when Solomon became king. And we don't know that for sure, but it's a reasonable guess. So, k o r e w a mo sokui shiki no tamini kikare de dabi ni yote dekta shi hen da to suriba. これは多分初めにソロモンの体感式のところで救われたと想像ができますね。それは確かなことではありません。記録されていないでも、そうかなと考えられるでしょう。そうこれはソロモンの王になった即位のことはちょっと面白いです。それは最初は列王記上で一節一緒にそれはソロモン王はアブルソスがれて次の王となるんですけどもその時は大きな式と大きな集会はありませんでしたそれで列大史上29章にそれは繰り返してもう一回公に行われて式があったんですねそ多分その2番目の式でこれが救われたかもしれないですね It's a little bit interesting when Solomon becomes king because first In 1 Kings chapter 1, he's kind of suddenly made the king. You know, he has the oil poured on him to be the king, and he's given the authority.、Uh, but later, when things were calmer, it tells us in、uh, the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, that they redid his coronation as a big public event. And that might be where this psalm was first used, I would imagine, although we don't know. Now, one thing, and we talked about this before, a lot of these psalms. Are written uh, for uh, public performance, you know, for a ceremony or for worship at the temple. And so they're divided into different voices or different people sharing. Instead of just having one person stand up and read the whole psalm, you might have three or four people, maybe even a little bit like a skit,、uh, sharing in the reading. Now, that's also something we don't know for sure because it's not recorded historically, but when you look at the structure of the psalms, Many of them are clearly have multiple speakers in the way the psalm is structured. So, この詩編にもうこの前に話されたことですけれどもこの詩編はもう全部じゃなくてでも多くの詩編はどこかで公に使うためにできたものです。Uh, 神殿の礼拝で使うためにまた式のために書かれたものもありますね。そしてその詩編の内容を見たら、これはもう一人の人は朗読する形じゃなくて、もういくつかの声でいろいろ人は、あもう一節二節ずつ朗読したと想像できますね。それも記録されていないですけれども、その詩編の構成を見ると、ああ、こうかなと思うところが多いですね。この詩編二編もその一つですね。And of course, Psalm 2 is one of these.、Uh, I looked at it and I divided it into four voices, and some people would divide it up differently. Uh, 一人だけとしたらちょっとおかしいところが出てきますね。So I looked at Psalm 2, I divided into four voices. Somebody else might divide it into five or even possibly three. But you can see when you read it that if just one person reading it, it kind of flows very strangely because it's clearly that inside the Psalm different people are talking. And the way I did it, somebody else might do it differently, is 
the narrator it reads at the beginning and then the earthly kings and then it's somebody representing God the Father and then the anointed king, the new king, and then back to the narrator for the closing. So, I was reading this last night and ま、その形で詩編を読みましょう。ちょっと自由があったら読んでおらんべて、その読み読んでもらいたいと思いますでも、これはオンラインの礼拝のためにできますかまるは一つですからそれはちょっと無理です。そして現代はソーシャルディス
新しいようにそれは神様に反対することになりますのでそういうわけですね、like, okay, here's like the voice of God the Father speaking or his representative of course reading it in the temple、uh, or in the enthronement ceremony and you get the image that he's saying What's wrong with you guys out there thinking you're going to rebel against this new king? I am the one who put him on the throne. Rebelling against him is rebelling against me. So it's a warning there. And next we get the voice of the new king or his representative. Tsugi wa atarashi o no koe mata sono daihyo desu ne. Messianic no shihen to shitara, kore wa miko naru kami yes kristo no koe ni narimasu ne. So next we get the voice of the new anointed king,、uh, or if it's messianic, God the Son, Jesus Christ, of course, read by some representative in the ceremony. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son, today I have become your father. Shuno sadamirare te tokoro ni shitegate watashi wa nobeyo. Shu wa watashi ni tsugirare ta. Omae wa watashi no kyo, watashi no ko. 今日私はお前を産んだとあります。So, これはもう新しい王が語るところですけれども、そのほとんどは主の言葉を引用して語っていることになりますね。これを見たら、もう主の隣に私はヤハウェイを確認つけたんですね。それは言語で、これは神様の名前、神様の聖なる名が書かれているところ。もう歴史の中あの長い話となりますけれども、そのユダヤ人たちはもう神様の聖なる名を朗読してはいけないと判断しました。現代の教会もほとんどの聖書はその神様の聖なる名のところに主と書くんです。それで注意のところ、また、スタディバイブルのところを見たら、それは、もともと、主の言語、言語で主の意味の言葉ですが、もともと神様の聖なる名前ですか、あ調べることができますね。残念ながら、それをテクストを読むことだけでいつもはっきりされていない日本語で。英語の方では大文字で書かれていますね。それを指すと、示すと。If you look next to the word Lord, where it's in all capital letters, I wrote Yahweh、uh, for the holy name of God that was not、uh, said publicly, not said in public address, you know, in Jewish history and in the church, it's still carried on the tradition in most Bible translations that we don't write Yahweh, instead, we write the Lord. In English translations, it's in all capital letters usually, so that you can see that this is the name of God underneath that in the original.、Uh, unfortunately, in Japanese translations, you usually have to look at the notes or look at a study Bible to see which places it's just the word for Lord and which places it's God's name. So, もう一つですけれども、日本語の方では、私はお前を産んだとありますね。それは文字通りの訳ですね。今度の英語の訳はちょっと文字通りではありません。それはもうもちろん、その言葉は文字通り訳されていますでも、文字通り産んだというわけはないですね。<笑>その当時の文化の中で、その新しい位を下の人に与えるときは、それは私の子という言葉を使うことがありました。特に神様は預言者とか王を呼ぶときに、私の子になるという言い方がありましてね。それとも、大王、大きな王は下の王たちを私の子ということもありました。And if you look at this, in English it just says, I have become your father. But the more literal translation is, I have begotten you, or I have given you birth. And that could be literal translation, but it doesn't mean literally that this person is born then. It means they're given a new mission, or a new status, or a new role at that point under the one who's making that determination. So, where a 
a, a great king appointed and a smaller king under them, they would use, oh, this is my child. I, I've begotten this person. Or where God appoints a new king for Israel, this language appears. And of course, this is also the language that we get in the New Testament in reference to the Messiah, Jesus. Ma, そして、メシアニックの会社で、これはイエスクリストの声となります。もっとも言う私は国々をお前の修行とし、地の果てまでお前の領土とする。お前は鉄の杖で彼らを打ち、遠くが器を砕くように砕く。and here in the, the voice of the newly anointed king, or in the voice of God the Son, Jesus, if we are messianic interpretation, ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter and you will dash them to pieces like pottery. So, this This is a very strong word and, and is almost a, a very frightening word. The idea here, uh, the nations of the inheritance, and he's going to break them with an iron scepter. So, this is This has the image of an extremely powerful great king who's able to rule over everybody. Image to stay. Well, this is actually why the Jewish scholars eventually, I think, decided that this was a messianic prophecy. So, this なぜかと言いますとその学者たちはダメでけの王たちはこんなに強いものにならなかったので、これは将来の逸か救い主メシアが来られる時に対してのヨゲンだと判断しました。メシアの逸だと判断しました。And the reason is that they decided it was messianic, I think really is because the, the scholars looked at it, the Jewish scholars, and they say, we can see that in the line of David's, in David's line, the kings after him, none of them were ever this powerful or this great, able to rule all the other nations. So this must be a prophecy for something in the future. And eventually they decide it must be the, the great Messiah, the Savior who's to come. Uh, it must be a messianic psalm and a prophecy there. Uh, even though initially they might have thought the uh, king that was getting the throne was going to become that powerful. They learned, of course, that was not so. So the Jewish scholars decided it was messianic. And then, of course, we know it's messianic because the New Testament authors quote it as messianic. And here, most New Testament scholars, I think, would say this is actually a prophecy about the end times and Jesus' second coming. And that's really the way it's treated, particularly in Revelation 19.15. So, sorry de Yudaya kyo no gaksha tachi wa yes no jidai no mai ni mo kore wa messianic no yogi no kotoba to mitomete ite mo shinyak seisho de kono shihin wa nanakai in your sight iru koto de watashi tachi wa kono shihin wa messianic da to tsugu wakarimasu. So, shite Christo kyo no oshie no nake de また特に黙示録十九章十五節にこれはその再臨の時イエスは再び来られてもう最後の審判することをイメージとして語っていると判断できますオッケー But next we have a different voice 次はとても違う声が出てきますね Wakai no koides, a voice of reconciliation. And some scholars think that this voice of reconciliation really represents the Holy Spirit coming in and interceding and bringing a peace or a reconciliation. So, ste aru gaksha wa kono wakai no koe wa yapari seirei no koe, seirei wa atarashi wakai sasete, 
平和を与えるところだと解釈します。Jesus says, Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Subete no o yo, imiya me zame yo, chio o same ru mono yo, satoshi o uke yo, o sore uyumate, shu ni tsukai, ono no ki tsutsu, yorokobi odore. Tarimas, ne? Ah, Chie o motte stigate yorokobi o itadakuto arimasu ne. If you're obedient, if you're wise and obedient and serve the Lord, you'll have rejoicing. And the word fear comes out, you know. Well, of course, you can't make light of the Lord. You can't、uh, just ignore Him. So there has to be some element of fear in a sense. But there is joy in serving God. Kono osore to yu kotoba mo arimasu. Sore wa. 恐れる、uh, ことですけど、恐れ、冬まって、それ何という意味もう、主なる神を軽んじて割れない。はなれないね。主の、uh, 主なる神を軽んじてはなれない。まあ、もちろん、神に使えると喜びをいただきますね。その意味、恐れと喜びは一緒に語っています。もう一つですけれども、この、Uh, Lord no toku wa Yahweh to arimasu ne. Shu no toku wa Yahweh.、Uh, where it says the Lord, that's another place where we get the holy name of God, Yahweh. So it's saying, serve the Lord God. Shu no aru kami ni shitigate, skairu no desu ne. Kono tokoro. Cha, tsugi wa, juni setsu wa saigo no seiku desu ne. Kono shihen. Kiss the sun lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Koni kuchizuke se yo. Shuno ikidori o maneki michio ushinao koto no nai yo ni. Shuno ikari wa matataku ma ni moe agaru. Ikini sai wai na koto ka. Shuo saki dokoro to suru hito wa subete. So, このところは、興味深いなのは、多分この構成で、この最後の方、主を先どころとする人は、これはその前の子に口づけしよう。この子は主となるのですね。その構成で、それはもう巫女なる神様を先どころとするとありますね。そして私たちは、クリスチンとして、その経験があるでしょう。私たちはもう自分は罪深いものだと認めて、イエスのところに行って願うと、イエスの十字架上の見業によって私たちは罪の許しをいただき、救いをいただく。このイエス・クリストは私たちの先どころとなっていると言えるでしょう。Now, it's interesting because in the structure here where it says kiss the sun and the last where it says take refuge in him, the structure shows that it, it sort of seems to be that it's the sun actually who's becoming the refuge、uh, in this particular place, in this verse. And so we look at that, we realize that that is, that is what happens. That's our Christian experience that we recognize that we are deeply sinful, we need a savior, we confess our sins, and we go to God and we. Invite Jesus into our life and receive the forgiveness of sins and salvation through his work on the cross. It's really Jesus who has become our refuge there from God's anger. So、uh, that's a really powerful place. So, this is what I want to do. I want to do a little bit of 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 a little bit. So, we've talked just a little bit about Psalm 2, but I want to touch upon a couple of related places in Scripture. Let's take a look at Psalm 46. Just one verse. God is our refuge and strength, and ever present trouble, help in trouble. Now we see this idea of the refuge being applied to perhaps God the Father and God the Son as well. And what we're seeing is that it's letting us know already in the Psalms here that、uh, God the Son, is, the Son of God, is also God the Son, that Jesus is divine God himself as well. 
そこに来たっているのは神は私たちの先ドクロとあやっぱり神はこの先ドクロですけど先に見てようにミコはその先ドクロですのでミコは神であることを示されているとかがえられますねそれはイエスはもう神のミコでありながらミコなる神であることを真
Glory to Christ Jesus, Son of God and God the Son. So this is our, our regular proclamation, and this is the New Testament's proclamation, and you can even find this way back in the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Let's pray. And this time I'll pray in Japanese. Oinorishimasu. Aisurushu kichinaru kamisama, sozo nushi de aru kamisama. Megumi yo watashi tashi ni watai kurusai. Tashi tashi wa tsudu ni anata megumi yo itsuyo to shite imasu. Anata na tsumi no yurushi yo itsuyo to shite imasu. Doka megumi yo susoi de shukuku o watai hitori hitori no ui ni yutakani. Kyo watashi tashi wa chotto daki shihin kara menabi mashite kiri domo. これもあなたの御言葉であって私たちがこれをちゃんと理解ができるように助けて導きと願いますこの頃ニュースデーとか新型コロナの恐れが書かれていますけれども私たちはあなたをよりどころとしてあなたの恵みを信頼してあなたの約束を信じます。私たち一人一人があなたの恵みをいただき、イエスとの出会いがあって、イエスと共に歩む者としてくださいますように、そしてイエスと一緒に歩んでいく道で、大きな祝福、平安と守りをお与えください。特に集まって人々をはじめオンラインで聞いて人々にはあもうそしてこの街のすべての人々にあなたの守りあなたの祝福が与えられますように私たちはあなたを褒めてたえますあなたの見業を感謝しますイエスの皆によってお祈りいたしますアーメン